Hey everybody, this is Evan with Boosted USA. Uh, today we are going to show you how to install a Magura hydraulic brake on your rev. Um, there's quite a performance advantage to the hydraulic brake and uh, it looks and feels cool. And on that note, we've got a, a well used rev here uh, that's in need of some love. So we're going to strip this one down and we're going to put the hydraulic brake on to replace the stock uh, cable disc brake. Uh, there are some tools you need. We've tried to keep it relatively simple in terms of having commonly available tools to do this. Um, there are probably some things you could get that would make this quicker, but if you just want to do this once on your own rev, uh, these things are, are pretty, pretty readily available. Uh, you need a drill. You need a bleed kit. You need some heat shrink. You need this thing. I don't exactly know what this is for, but I found this in the drugstore in the women's beauty section. Um, this is a kind of a critical tool. We'll call it our nose picker. Um, Loctite, knife, needle nose pliers, lighter, 21 mil wrench or large spanner will also work. You need a T25 Torx bit um, with Torx settings. You need a set of metric hex keys from five mil and down. Uh, some wire cutters, or ideally, uh, we don't have them, but uh, cable uh, tubing cutters. You can get those from Maguro, but if you have some sharp wire cutters, it'll work. Um, an 8 mil wrench, large flathead screwdriver, a rubber mallet, and side cutters. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is use the 2.5 mil hex to remove the grips. Alright, and the next thing we're going to do is loosen up the brake with a five mil. Five mil again, loosen the cable retainer here. back these guys out so we can try and put the cable through. There, like that. And then pop that guy out. So you're free to remove that guy. Okay, so on your rev, you're gonna see that there's a wire here running inside the handlebars. You can just snip that and proceed on to the next step. So back to this rev, we've got, the, we've got everything removed. The wire doesn't exist on this rev. This was the one we just mentioned. Uh, the next thing you can do is remove the handlebars because we're gonna take those apart uh, to put a new wire in for the Maguras. So X key again. 5 mil, back this guy off, pull the headset, the handlebars out, and then the next thing is to disconnect this wire, um, but make sure you don't let it run back into the, slip back into the, into the stem. So I usually just wedge the coiled part like that so you can't can't slip back in. And there you go. So next we'll take the handlebars over the bench and uh, take them apart. 
So uh, your three mil hex to remove the light. So when you take this guy apart, you gotta make sure you don't lose the little washers inside, which are here and here. And then the next thing you do is unplug the light. Okay, so there's your light. And then you have to take the bracket off as well. Which is with your two and a half. Okay, so we take that off to expose these screws here, which are, oops, which are also two and a half. Okay, so those guys are out. That allows us to pop the display up. Okay, so when you pull the display out, you have to be careful that you don't pull on the wiring. Um, this is the plug for the headlight, and there's a tiny little, you can see a little grommet in there. If you pull too hard from the inside, that little grommet, which is buried deep down inside there, will pop out of place and your display is not going to be watertight anymore. Uh, if that does happen, you have to pull these screws off, pull this plate off, slip the grommet back on, and put it back together. But uh, I suggest you avoid doing that, like I said, by not pulling on, on the wiring. Um, so now the display is out. The next thing to do is to, again, pull the wire that we cut um, that runs in through this hole and meets at this junction. So we slip that out and now you need to carefully cut the old shrink tubing off to expose the plug underneath here. And you basically cut on top of the plug, you're gonna need quite a bit of pressure to cut through this. Uh, this wiring on this end is gonna be replaced anyway, so you don't have to be too careful about cutting into it. But on this end, you gotta be very careful you don't go too far through the shrink and cut the wiring on the other side, because if you do that, uh, you got a big problem. Okay, so there's the plug, and you can see why I didn't want to do any more cutting on this end because we're gonna reuse. This is gonna stay intact here. So and if we had cut any more here, we'd be cutting into, just cutting into the, through the casing and the insulation on the wire and damaging it on this side. Um, so, so far, we're good here. Okay, so the next step, now that we've got to the plug, is to put the new wire through, and this comes with your, with your kit you get from us. And you have to come in from the outside and try and get it through, up and through that hole in the handlebars there with the grommet on it while at the same time making sure that you don't pull this grommet that I mentioned earlier through.
Okay, so what we've done is we've pushed the wire through and you kind of fiddle with twisting on this end so that it rotates the plug here and you watch through the opening in the grommet for the white plug. And again, it's a little bit of fiddling and a little bit of luck. Um, if you go too far, you're gonna end up with it way up here. So you see the distance here. That's kind of your, your guide to where this plug is gonna, gonna show up. And once it's there, you use the little grabber guy this guy to fish it out and then we're gonna grab the rest of it and I'm not gonna pull here I'm pushing from this end and just kind of using the needle nose as a guide to get it out because what you cannot do is pull at all on this white plug if you pull on the white plug you're just gonna pull pull it off the wiring and then you're out of luck Okay, so that's the, the white plug exposed. So the next thing we're gonna do is put the shrink wrap, shrink wrap over top of that, connect it up and then melt the shrink wrap and then we're gonna put it all back together. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we kind of got to put the display back down and you need to try and do this without crushing all the wiring underneath. Um, making sure again, um, here's your brake and this is the one that runs down into the stem. So make sure you put that back down through before you try and close this back up. So what I do is I kind of push it back down uh, just to see how it feels. That went down okay. It didn't feel like it's gonna crush anything. And we need to check that this wire is free. You don't need a lot of length here because there's some extra length on the other side, so that's probably okay. And the next thing is to put the screws back in. So, and you can check the top. There is a rubber gasket um, that seats when you put that back down. And obviously this, everything is flush here, so that's fine. The next thing is to put the headlight bracket back on, which goes like that. Okay. And then the headlight itself, again, make sure that you don't lose the washer on either side there. Make sure you feed the cable through. And I think it's probably easiest to do up the cable first and then so you've got a little bit of length in the cable before putting the bolt back in. Then you can work that through. Line that guy up. Um, there's also a nut that's somewhat held captive in the bracket that you want to make sure it doesn't pop out. In this case, it stayed in place.
and put that back on with a 3 male hex. Okay, so there's your headlamp. Headlight back on. And then there's a grommet. This would have come off when you cut the stock wire uh, in order to make sure that this is still waterproof, this grommet. Uh, needs to go back on. All bars can go back on. Do the cable up first. Okay, and then slip the cable back down into the stem. Okay, and then we're gonna line this guy up. Five mil hex. Make sure this is square to the fender, roughly. Okay, so the next thing to do is to take the deck off. So you've got to expose the screws. Uh, this is a four mil hex. We can do it manually, but to make it quicker, we're going to use this guy. Back them all the way out. And then the deck will just lift up. Uh, make sure you don't lose the screws or the spacers, etc., that are underneath. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the old cable. We're not going to reuse this old cable, so we're just going to get rid of this guy to make it easy. So that's going to pull through. Um, you also need to cut off this, ca this cable tie here. Again, make sure you don't cut into the wiring. It comes out. And figure out which one it is. Okay, it's that guy right there. So the next step is we have to pull, turn the rev upside down and pull this shroud off um, so that the cable will come out cleanly and more importantly so that we can mouse the new one through or put the fish the new one through. So the next step is you need the two mil hex to pull these two little guys out right here. Um, just to note that these strip extremely easily um, so when you put them back in, it's just finger tight. Okay, and then the next step is to slip the shroud back. You want to slip it back kind of there. And that'll allow us to pull the wiring out and get it out of the equation. It's got to come out through the front of the shroud as well. Okay, and then we're gonna put the rev back the right way up so you feed the new cable through. And you still need access to the shroud, so you gotta make sure it slips back a little bit. There are normally one, two, three of these. In this case, somebody's been in here already at some point, and there's only one left. So you carefully snip these away again, trying not to cut the insulation on the wiring. So that frees up the cable. Under, undo the Juliet plug here. And this is what makes this the rev water type. So you pull this guy out, make sure that the O-ring stays here. So that when you put it back together, you've got an O-ring there. Cause if not, it is no longer gonna be water tight. And then in order to drop Either you should strap your, your rev down, or in this case, I'm gonna put another battery on here because when you pull this wheel, the rev's gonna end up on the floor um, because that end's gonna be much heavier. Okay, so the old caliper's gotta go. So that's five mil hex, get rid of that. Um, however, you need to keep the machine screws that come out and you're going to reuse those. So 
keep these two guys for later. So a 21 mil wrench, I want to back these guys off. Back these guys off. And you have to watch now because depending on how the lock washer set up, the motor may or may not just drop out. Sometimes you, you gotta wiggle them out. Okay, so the wheel's off. The next thing is to change the rotor. Uh, it's with your four mil hex. And it is also very easy to strip the threads on the wheel. So do not over tighten these. And if they don't go in straight and you sense at all that you're cross threading them, stop and start again. Okay, so that's your new rotor. The next thing I do is put the wheel back on. So the important thing here is that the there's an opening in the nut here that has to face forwards and be horizontal or you end up stressing the cable. And there's one washer to the outside, one washer to the inside on both sides. So you kind of want to line all that up. And then what I do is I lift the rev up so that I know that the axle is seated flush on the frame. And double check that your cable is right. And then do a little bit, a little bit on each side. And again, double check that you got the washers in the right place. If you don't, then the spacing is not going to be right. Okay, so the wheel's back on. Make sure when you do the nuts up that you're that you either put the rev on the ground so that the axle is seated properly in the frame, or that you have some uh, force pushing up on it. Uh, again, so that the axle is seated all the way flush at the top of the frame. And then do the nuts up one at a time, little by little, um, until they're really snug. You want them really nice and nice and tight. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna do is check that we're running after we plug the cable back in. So again, the cable, make sure that the O-ring is there. If it's not, you need to get one. And then Make sure that these guys match up properly. Make sure it goes all the way in. Tighten that up nice and tight so it compresses the O-ring a little bit. And then power it up. So this is a good test to make sure that we didn't mess up any of the wiring internally. Which we 
we did not, so that's good. And then I always run them back and forth a little bit in the third speed, just so that the axle seats properly. Sometimes there's a little bit of movement the first time, but we're good. And then just recheck your still tight on these guys. Let me have a move. Okay. So the next thing we can do is mount the bracket, which again is supplied here. And that goes. Okay, and there are two little machine screws. So these little guys go in here. And again, make sure that everything goes in effortlessly when you start. Because if not, you've got a cross threading problem and if you do that back out and start again. So it should go in really easily. Okay, and then tighten these guys down. Um, you should also be using Loctite when you do this. Um, for demonstration purposes, we are not, but you should put a dab of Loctite on the threads before you put these in. Okay, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get this uh, cable back in place so it's out of the way. And for that, you need some zip ties. And you can use the existing hold downs or tie downs here. This, cab this cable is kind of dropped in place. I don't use these unless I need to because they do tend to crimp the cables. Um, in this case, this one is gonna lay down pretty nicely. So we might just put one of them, just one of them to hold it, hold it in place. We feed that guy through, rotate it around, and work it into place. And you need this, the bulky part at the top. If it sits over this way, the deck won't go down properly. Give it a little bit of tension. That's gonna be fine. You won't have any clearance issues when you go to put the deck down later. And then you can cut that guy off with your wire cutters. We're gonna finish pulling the old cable out and then we will mouse the, the new cable through. And that's pretty easy. You wanna save this grommet for later. Save this grommet for later. And we just pull this guy, pull this guy through. So that's the old cable out. So the next step is to slip the brake lever assembly on. Um, you're gonna be cutting this cable in order to pass it through at the bottom. So you wanna set it uh, roughly vertical like that because you don't wanna have uh, fluid coming out or you wanna minimize uh, fluid loss here, all right? So if you have a cable cutter, uh, as I suggest on the Magura site, that's better. I'm using sharp wire cutters and so far uh, that's worked fine and we're gonna cut it around here there's about eight inches or eight to ten inches of extra length so you can cut it a little bit up here to minimize fluid loss and then we'll leave that part and there is in the Magura kit a little plug for this guy you want to try and spin the twist out of the cable before you do it.
Okay, so this one is tricky, a little being a little tricky. Doesn't want to go through the it's trying to come out the kickstand. So you can slip the battery out. You have some better visual on where it's going. And maybe try and get it on track through this gap inside. Okay, so you can see it's come out the right spot with the rest of the cables. And then it's gonna come up through there and you gotta make sure you go through the inside of the grommet that you, on the shroud that you removed earlier. feel it binding a little bit so we're just going to play with it and we're going back and forth and it's right there so the key is to kind of just work it back and forth at the same time you might want to rotate the cable because it's going to naturally it's, it's got a little bit of a little bit of memory in it from being coiled up in the box And that's your cable. So you got plenty of length there to cut this later. Okay, so we're at the stage now where there isn't anything more uh, to this that's rev specific. Um, what I would do now is go to the Maguro website and find their videos on reattaching um, the cable, as well as the bleeding process, as well as mounting the cable at the end of it. Um, as far as the rev stuff goes, when you've done all of that, you're gonna simply put the deck back down and making sure that you don't pinch the cable, or either of those cables. And after the bleeding and everything is done, you wanna flip the rev over and do the shroud up. You don't wanna do it before that because you're gonna lose fluid uh, when you turn it over. Um, so it's, uh, I think it's a, an upgrade worth, well worth doing. Um, the hydraulic brake, I mean, it looks awesome, and it's going to make your rev stop much that much more quickly. And the Magura is really nice because uh, it's extremely powerful, but at the same time, there's quite a bit of throw in the lever, so it's very easy to modulate how much you're braking. It's not an on-off. Um, certainly, if you want to lock it up and do epic skids with it, it's super easy to do that. But you can also very easily just mod modulate the pressure and not have the thing uh, lock up. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like and follow us, uh, boostedusa.com, and uh, feel free to ask us any questions at uh, support at boostedusa.com. Thank you.